this ready? Representatives to discuss conflicting claims to the metal rich, uninhabited world of star WWB 7. We are proceeding on course to the neutral world of Pomfrets to meet with Ambassador Koft of the Klingon Empire and Envoy Vendes of the Romulan Sphere. Enjoy yourself, Captain. I understand Pomfrets is a very appealing world, but be sure and let the Klingons and Romulans know where we stand. I'm afraid we won't have much time for the former, Mr. Scott. This is strictly a business trip. Besides, the Romulans agreed to this meeting, provided all participants remain within the confines of the Pomflensian off-planet mission. Which means no sightseeing and no waste of time. Uh, I might have known you'd look at it like that, Mr. Spock. Mr. Scott, I did not know you exhibited tendencies towards telepathy. Ah, Haggis. Mr. Kyle. Yes, Chief. Prepare for beam down. Are you ready, Captain? Mr. Spock? Ready. Ready, Chief. Energize, Mr. Coyote. Hello. What? And greetings. I'm Captain Kirk of the USS Enterprise. And this is Mr. Spock, my first officer. How fairest thou, Captain? Call me Amalog of the Bureau. I represent the government of Pomplets. Ambassador Koft and Envoy Vendiz await you in the conference bubble. I have been directed to escort you there. You are several minutes late. The Klingon Imperial Representative Koft has displayed much temper. Sounds like Koft, all right. The other Federation representative is already here, too. Other representative? Amalog. We know nothing of another Federation representative to this convocation. Dearest me, his credentials appeared quite in order. What's his name? Spratt, I believe. Jack Spratt. Odd name. All Terran names are odd. What is oddest is that we were not told that Starfleet was sending a third observer to the conference. Peculiar indeed, Mr. Spock. I... We're here. Gentle sirs. And I tell you, Vendiz, this is merely another of the slimy, unmentionable subterfuges that the Federation employs to... And Kirk, Mr. Spock, so delightful to see you again. The feelings are mutual, Koft. Yes. Well, allow me to introduce First Officer Cattell of the Imperial Battle Cruiser Avenger. Mr. Spock, Officer Cattell. <coughs> Morning, Vendors. I almost didn't recognize you. I am not offended, Captain Kirk. It is our claim to the world known presently only as WWB-7 that I wish you and your government to recognize. My assistant, Subaltern Wuoks. Uh, yes, yes, now that we all know each other. As I was saying, just before you joined us, Captain Kirk, the Empire appreciates the speed with which you have acted to rectify this deplorable, unnecessary little spat. Hopefully everything can be resolved to everyone's satisfaction with as much speed as possible. Well put, colleague. To that end, I presume to open formal negotiations with a traditional toast. An exceptional local vintage, I am told. I took the liberty of determining in advance that it would be both tasteful and palatable to all of us. To the successful apportionment of rights. To a rapid resolution. To truth. Spock, you enjoyed it. I didn't think you cared for alcoholic beverages. Protocol, Captain, be quiet. Now, to business, gentlemen. I'm sure that you, Vendiz, and you, Kirk, immediately see that... A moment, Mr. Ambassador. Really, Spock, considering Koff's temper, you'll be wise to interrupt him already. I call your attention to the back of the room, Captain. What are you two muttering about? The back. Oh, I see, Spock. You there. Come out where we can see you. Oh, me? You're the only other person in this chamber. Are you supposed to be a representative from Starfleet? My name's Spratt. Uh, actually, I'm more of a neutral observer. Kirk, what's the meaning of this? That's what I'm trying to find out, Mr. Envoy. Neutral observer, hmm? 
For whom? Captain, never mind. The Pomplensians apparently accepted him. Let's get on with this. That face. What are you mumbling, Spock? Nothing. Oh, all right. Look, Mr. Spratt, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but if you took advantage of the Pomplensians... A notoriously backward people. Well, I... That's what I said, wasn't it? That face. Captain, I know I've seen that face somewhere before. And let him stay. He can do no harm. I, too, wish to proceed to a speedy conclusion of the conference. That's right. Go right ahead, gentlemen. I, I'm just here to observe. Well, if you and Cop are both willing. As I was saying, gentlemen, face. it is well known that the Imperial Klingon claim to WWB-7 is totally without foundation, based wholly on rumor and a highly unlikely landing by a drunken scout pilot. It has no real legitimacy whatsoever. Captain, request permission to return to ship. I require a full medical checkup. My hearing appears to be going. No, no, Spock. I think I heard it too. Mr. Ambassador, did you just say what I think you just said? I, I merely said we have no solid claim to the world in question. We don't. I mean, excuse me, gentlemen, I, I don't feel very well. Then is perhaps you'd better go ahead. If you wish. It doesn't matter anyway, since Romula has absolutely no proof that the wandering prospector who put in our claim to WWB-7 actually made Planetfall. In fact, he probably made the whole story up on orders from... on orders from Great Mother of the Egg. What am I saying? There's something very peculiar happening here, Captain. It may be to our advantage, however. This might be a good time to state the Federation's position. Since there seems to be some confusion on the part of both the Empire and the Romulan hegemony, let me say that the Federation's claim is valid under subsection 6 of the Treaty of Mao. Of course, everyone knows the treaty is of dubious legitimacy and... and... Most peculiar. Ambassador Koch, Envoy Vendis, if you two bloodsuckers are agreed, I... You're over, Rock. However, under the circumstances, I don't excuse you. I mean... Why don't you both return to your ships for a little rest and shoot yourselves? Exalted one, permit me to say that's not a very diplomatic statement to make, especially for an idiot like yourself. What, did you say, Subaltern? Uh, why, nothing, Exalted one. I, I only call you what you are, an idiot. I, I like to place myself not under arrest. Noble sirs, control yourself. Though I know it's hard for members of backward species to... That face! Stop that man! Stop him! Let me go! I haven't done anything! I don't know what you two are up to. What statements have been made in this room which could be regarded as an act of war? That's because you're so full of hot air that... Captain, before further damage is done to the conference, I suggest everyone keep quiet. Everyone except this person. I didn't recognize him until he tried to slip out. Why don't you relax, Mr. Quince? Tell us how you've managed to sabotage this gathering. Sabotage? I have no idea what you're talking about, Mr. Spock. Be assured I will report this to... What did you call me? My name is Spratt. Quince. Coriolanus Quince. I've heard that name before. Somewhere. What does this mean, Captain Kirk? Who is this person? Coriolanus Quince. Mr. Spock, the same Coriolanus Quince who promised to double the grain output of Demosthenes IV and ended up turning the entire crop into gas-producing weeds that made everyone who got near them giggle uncontrollably? The same Coriolanus Quince who planned to quadruple the water supply of the desert world of Quetar and ended up changing the entire existing supply into jello? The same Coriolanus Quince who... The same, Captain. The same. Captain Kirk, would you please explain what's going on here? I know how lazy and incompetent you are, but that is... It's all right, Bendis. None of us may be responsible for what he's saying. This imposter here is responsible for nearly destroying at least three Federation colonies in the past ten years. 
not to mention numerous other unmentionable acts of destruction. I have simply tried to exercise my talent to make the galaxy safe for the quiet, the peace-loving, the meat. Especially for Coriolanus Quince. Cut, please. Mr. Quince is a well-known, notoriously known, one might say, inventor of undeniable genius and distorted motives. Or rather, undeniable motives and distorted genius. His intentions are good. His results usually devastating. Oh, well, a little bug here, a little bug there. I've had some bad luck, I'm afraid. Bad luck? Do you call turning the entire water supply of a world into pink gelatin bad luck? There was a polymerization factor involved that could not be foreseen. You have a brilliant mind, Chris. Your trouble is that between imagination and execution, something is lost. But not this time, Mr. Spock. The drug has proven itself completely successful. Witness the course your conversations have taken. Drug? What drug? Kirk, if this person has poisoned us... What did you do, Quince? I spiked that ceremonial bottle of wine you all found so tasteful, gentlemen, with my clear potion. Clear potion? Anyone who ingests it is forced from then on to tell nothing but the absolute truth. By the Imperial... 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 Name and method of execution of a human known as Coriolanus Quince for crimes against civilization. Give him to Romulan. There can only be one just end for the perpetrator of such a horrible plot. I disagree. As first to suffer damage, the Empire claims the right. Besides, we can make his passing last long. Really, gentlemen, I didn't think... What harm can a little truth do? What harm can a little truth do? You were right, Kirk. This person is criminally naive. A little truth could bring down all business, all government, destroy the civilized galaxy. Those aren't the things that worry me, Quince. It's the little things. So many personal relationships require, oh, not really lies, but tiny evasion, little subterfuges. You understand? Yes, I understand. What would you rather have, Quince? Peace and little lies, or truth and constant war? You've got it all backwards, all of you. It's not like that at all. No? Try some of your own potion, and then tell me again. I... I'm not thirsty. Give him to me, Kirk, and we'll finish him and his invention once and for all. No, Romula claims the right. I don't wish to have to disappoint you, gentlemen, but Federation law states that as a Federation citizen, Quince must be tried by his own people. I really can't protest, Kirk. You're absolutely right. I mean, the Grenish. You mean despite the Federation's laxity in such matters, you're not going to let us have him, even though it wouldn't be legal and proper? You see, gentlemen, the potion does have its little uses. I now declare this conference indefinitely postponed. Envoy Vendiz, Captain Kirk, I bid you both a miserable afternoon. The most pleasant scene to you, Ambassador. Ah. We didn't expect you back so soon, Captain. Who's that with you? His name is Quince, Mr. Scott. And if he tells you he can triple our speed, don't let him anywhere near the engine. Captain, I beg of you. Let me spread truth throughout the galaxy. Sorry, Quince. Not at the expense of hundreds of millions of misunderstanding lies. It's a beautiful dream, but sometimes dreams and reality don't coincide. Mr. Sulu, I resume command now. Lieutenant Uhara, contact sick bay. Dr. McCoy to the bridge. Won't be necessary, Jim. I started up as soon as I heard you were...